Hi, Micro Pantry here again, and today I want to talk a little bit about the microscope specimens um, and the characteristics that a microscope specimen should have to be suitable for compound uh, microscopes, like the ones that I have standing over here. Uh, it's going to be a little bit something of a, of, of a lecture, I would say, so it's a rather a theoretical yeah, explanation. I'll do other videos where I'm going to show you a little bit more about how to prepare the slides, but I think a theoretical introduction is also quite useful sometimes. So first First of all, in order for a microscope uh, specimen to be suitable for uh, mic microscopy, um, it's got to fulfill four different uh, criteria. And if the specimen does not meet them, then you have to process it in such a way that it does meet these four criteria. And I'm going to uh, step you through these four criteria right, right now. So number one, the most obvious one, the specimen has to be sufficiently small. Um, otherwise, you're not able to fit it on a microscope slide. Um, that is uh, yeah, basically physical limitations to the size. Um, of the specimen and if it is not possible for you to uh, make this, the specimen smaller um, then essentially yeah you have to use a different microscope like a stereo microscope for example but generally um, you have to be able you have to find some kind of a way to reduce the size of the specimen and one very common way is, is to microtome the specimen this means uh, that you uh, uh, slice it into very thin sections using a microtome um, another possibility would be to squash the specimen. Uh, this is only possible if it's sufficiently soft and then this kind of separates the cells uh, and uh, of course uh, can also introduce artifacts because you're also damaging the, the, the original um, yeah, specimen, uh, compos uh, not composition but uh, the way that the cells are put together but by squeezing it you're kind of sp uh, spreading them apart. Um, or uh, another way would be for example to polish them uh, if you for example have a rock uh, that you would like to observe using a microscope maybe you want to do polarizing microscopy then you have to polish them because it's not possible to cut a rock um, and there are a variety of different ways but you have to first get the specimen uh, small enough uh, so that you're able to fit it on the microscope slide. So this was basically criteria number one. Criteria number two, the specimen must be sufficiently thin and this also kind of relates a little bit to the first one um, because thick specimens have um, a, a problem, uh, produce several problems. First of all they're incredibly difficult to focus because um, when you have a thick specimen and you're focusing in the middle of the specimen then the structures that are above or below it are blurry and they kind of overlap with the image that is in focus with the part that's in focus so that means you're not able to see the part that's in focus very well because of the layers that are above or below it they kind of interfere and they kind of overlap and make uh, the whole image a little bit more fuzzy and blurry so if you make it very thin then the level of focus uh, that you have uh, will um, just be limited to the specimen itself and there is nothing that above or below it that kind of disturbs uh, the image. So you got to make it uh, sufficiently thin. Um, and uh, a second reason why um, a thin specimen is uh, very good is, is sometimes when there is uh, in the water sample, when the, you have moving ob objects, then what they will do, and there's too much water in there, then the, uh, the cells, the ciliates, whatever, they will move in and out of focus. And it's very difficult for them to actually, yeah, to, to track them or to trace them, because as soon as you have it, it's already uh, disappeared up or below the level of focus. So you don't only have to try to catch it in, in on X, Y on the horizontal plane, but also vertically. And you have to keep on refocusing and also um, centering the slide again. And that's a lot of yeah, it's kind of yeah a challenge. Okay, make it thin, and this limits also the movement of the um, of the specimen. So the third one is, is is that the specimen must be sufficiently bright. And this means that there are certain specimens, like for example insects and so on, that are very heavily pigmented. And therefore, when you put it under the microscope, what you're going to just see is you're going to just see a black outline. Um, you're not going to see any um, details of the specimen itself. You're just going to see yeah, the, the overall shape and the central, central part is, is black. Um, this is of course uh, yeah, a disadvantage uh, because you want to see the structural details inside the specimen and not just the black outline. And uh, in order to solve that issue you have to bleach the specimen um, or you have to use solvents to remove uh, the pigment if the pigment is water soluble. And so for example insects and other arthropods what you can do is, is you can brighten them up by uh, placing them for several days into lactic acid. Um, yeah, you take some lactic acid and you, you mix it with water and you 
place the specimen in that and this kind of brightens up uh, the exoskeleton to, to allow more light to go through. And last but not least, it's a little bit the opposite here is, is uh, the specimen must have a sufficiently high contrast. Um, if the specimen has too low contrast, uh, then color contrast, then it's more difficult to see the specimen compared to the background. And uh, sometimes, however, um, it is like this, you're still able to see the specimen if um, the specimen has a different refractive index. Um, for example, bacteria are very difficult to see because generally they're, yeah, they're very transparent, that they don't have a lot of contrast. But if you close the condenser a lot, what's going to happen is, is that because bacteria have a different refractive index compared to their surrounding, what you will see is, is you will see those diffraction patterns and you can actually see that where the bacteria are, not because they are darker yeah, by nature, but rather because the bacteria they diffract the light differently and this causes the, um, yeah, them to appear uh, darker compared to the background. Uh, but uh, if you really want to get a high quality, if you want to get high quality or higher quality uh, images of, of uh, transparent specimens, then you have to switch over to phase contrast because those uh, diffraction artifacts, uh, they also um, reduce uh, the resolution and uh, yeah, so, uh, but with phase contrast, uh, there, it's an entirely different uh, method and this can also increase the contrast of uh, transparent specimens or you stain the specimen. That's of course uh, another very common one uh, that you add a stain. However, be aware that the stain is, as a chemical substance might actually harm also the cells that you want to see. So that was kind of a quick uh, run through. Um, and as you can see, there's so many points here and the situation is the following. For different specimens, they are I different ideal methods of preparation. Um, so there is not one general um, yeah, a method of preparing a specimen that's uh, it's all purposes, but you have to look a little bit at the different uh, type of uh, specimen and how it's uh, how they respond to the different types of treatments, and that's why there are for the different types of specimens there are different protocols that you can use, and, and you have to do a little bit of research uh, to find out which is the most uh, ideal protocol to be used to process a certain specimen. In any case, I think that should be enough again for today. I wish you all the best. Happy micro hunting as always, and see you around next time. Bye bye.